Monday here, and the Whisperer doesn't want to just hijack the whole thing. And so uh, let's, you know, the, the, the Twins, you know, it was a series against Oakland, and I don't know, not many people were watching that over, you know, a wild playoff game and some other things, but the Twins, despite some injuries, continued to win some games. So let's, let's go around the room. We'll get to a buffoon of the week at some point, too, but let's start with Judd. Do you have any Twins-related statements for us? Indeed I do, and I am going to start off with the positive, since, as Phil just said, they swept the Oakland Athletics. My first statement is this. I got a tingle. I got a tingle. Oh, God. Jace Tingler. Oh, God. Out of the bullpen. Rocco. The Tingler. The Tingler. In, in Baltimore Jace. with COVID. I think he, he's back now. Yeah. But uh, the Tingler steps up to the plate. Things didn't work out with the Padres, the Friars, so he got fired there. But the bench coach, four games in, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the tingler, three and one. So they suffered the bad loss on Thursday in Baltimore, but then they come back and sweep. And Jace Tingler, interim manager, interim for now at least, three and one, and off to a heck of a start as the Twins uh, skipper. I got a tingle, boys. Okay, is this a? You guys are watching the Showtime Lakers thing on HBO, which I haven't <laughs> seen the finale last night. Is this a Jack McKinney situation? Listen, We're Rocco, gonna... why don't you? Looks like you're still a little under the weather there from COVID. Why don't we just keep letting uh, Paul Westhead and Pat Riley coach the team? Be great. Listen, all you I say know, that... all I Go know, it's done a good job. Oh, I know. I just said. The Tingler's done a good job. That's all, you know, three and one. Well, I can't. But you say, you know, that the things didn't go well in San Diego. Things went very well in San Diego Actually, that's for true. a year and like three quarters. And then halfway through August of last year, they just stopped winning games and they had some clubhouse. Pro- they have big personalities. Manny Machado is, is a hard guy to manage. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they've got some. I mean, it was a meltdown and I'm not saying that he should be exonerated. I'm sure there's things that he should have done differently. But I was saying, mm-hmm. Rocco's done a pretty good job this year, too, because they got oh, yeah. to watch that Rocco. But it is nice yeah. having Jace Tingler in the mix in case. Why things. are you bringing this up, Zolgad? Why <laughs> yeah. are you bringing this typical up? Typical Zolgad. They're day. 18 and 11. On they loser, loser and North. Typical of, what, typ- North. typical of those guys to bring Negative up. North. Uh, that, yeah. Twins are winning and they bring up a managerial situation. <laughs> How is this helping the team? I saw that tweet yesterday. Oh, God. A guy that we all know got a tweet basically saying, you're not helping the team by tweeting this. What are this. you doing? Um, dude, the I'm not team, paying for the team. The team can help itself by just performing yeah, exactly. well and signing free agents and making trades. Exactly. Yeah. We just comment. All right, Declan. <laughs> all right. My statement is, we're going to need a new closer. So Emilio Pagan has been, uh, has been saving games by the grace of God somehow. He has four saves so far. He has faced 41 batters in his eight innings of work. And he has a whip of almost two. 1.7 whip so far for Emilio Pagan, who was obviously acquired in the Chris Paddock trade that sent your closer Taylor Rogers over to San Diego, who is thriving with the Padres. But luckily, I think they have their in-house option. And his name is Johan Duran, who has been lights out For the Twins as a reliever so far. In 14 innings pitch, 24 strikeouts, and routinely pumping 100 miles per hour on the gun, dude. This is that reliever that the Twins have lacked. This is a Twins pitcher that they have mostly lacked throughout the last 10, 15 years, right? What has Josh Hader been able to give the Brewers? This this electric lefty who was able to come in and throw 100 and throw just nasty breaking balls and wipe hitters out. Um, and this is exactly what the Twins could use in Duran. I know he's younger and they want to ease him in, but at this rate, I think you got to start using him more in high leverage situations. May as well use him as your closer. Emilio Pagan, I think his time's going to be up here pretty soon if he continues to walk the plank. And Duran does have, he does have two saves, and I, and I agree. I think, I don't, I don't think you should just be preserving him only for save situations because I think then you, then you wind up not using him in certain games. Correct. Yes. So I, I, ideally, he would be your, and this is what Taylor Rogers was. Ideally, he'd be your fire firefighter guy, and sometimes he's a saves guy. And Pagan could just hold down, you know, if it's a two run lead or a three run lead, just you want to walk a guy or two. That's fine. The weird thing about Pagan, he already has, he's walked ten batters so far in what nine, eight, eight and two thirds innings. He's walked ten batters. All of last season was San Diego, and he had he wasn't that great with San Diego last year, but 
He only walked 18 batters all season in 63 innings. So the, he's not been a big control issue guy throughout his career, but Got the he yips. can't find the plate yep. at all so far this year. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. The, the pitching yips, man, can be real. Duran is an, an intriguing one, though, because I believe he threw, um, he threw a ton of pitches, and he's pitching two innings at a time, and he did on Saturday, so he couldn't come back Sunday. Um, I wonder, Declan, to your point, because – I wouldn't use him just a, as a closer, right? But I wonder if they shouldn't be n- necessarily targeting him for m- multiple in- innings of work and thus eliminating him from the next game for sure, because it seems like he's a guy that I want available as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I get why they, I get why what they're doing. I just don't know if that's the best use of a guy who is so filthy and can, it, like, if I throw him on Saturday. Do I want to say, well, he can't pitch Sunday for sure? It sure be nice to bring him back if I have a situation on Sunday again. Yeah. So I wonder if that's how how they could craft this differently. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I he's kind of Duran is kind of the the Josh Hader weapon. I'm not going to put him quite in that category, right? Yet, but they would the Brewers would use him for two mm-hmm. innings and then he mm-hmm. would be unavailable, and it's just kind of depends on the game flow. But uh, yeah, I, I think I actually think Pagan is going to settle in control wise and be more reliable. It's kind of shocking that he hasn't blown more games to this point. <laughs> they're dude, they're stockpiling wins right now. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, I, the, the more wins they can stockpile now, the more leeway they get later to go through a bad beating stretch. bad teams, which is awesome. Yeah, you you don't good for you. you Who you cares? Should not apologize for beating hell no bad teams. Okay, here's my first win statement. Mm-hmm. Royce Lewis's swing looks exactly like Derek Jeter's swing. I've watched him a little bit in the minor leagues and here and there, just spring training clips and whatnot, but it never, his first career major league hit the other night was just a rocket single to right field, just like Derek Jeter. And he's got that same sort of like reach the bat out, poke the ball to opposite field. The stance is very similar. He's a, he's, he's a cool, calm, collected personality, just like Jeter. Great kid. I'm going to guess he probably studied Derek Jeter a little bit growing up. And some of those mannerisms are, are wearing off on him in a good way, but just watch this dude's mannerisms and swing. It's Derek Jeter 2.0. I'll piggyback off that with this statement. Okay. He he ain't going back down. Um, this kid belongs. Hmm. This kid belongs. He is wired absolutely right. He'll struggle. That's fine. The problem is when you struggle and you get lost, and now you're in your own head and you feel bad for yourself and things to right. This kid's not going to do that. He belongs. Furthermore, I've got his position because Carlos Correa is going to come come back here. I don't know when, but he's going to come back and play shortstop, and that's awesome, right? It's, it's not going to be Tuesday, by the way. It's no, it here. won't be. He, he, he confirmed that it's more painful than he thought, but it's well, not broken. So Okay, just quick aside. Put him on the IL then, retroactive. Yeah. I bet they yeah, were. but they didn't yesterday. They had two backup catchers. That was it. Idiots. Um, <laughs> but anyway, back to the point. Royce Lewis, among his positions when he does stay, because he belongs here, will be center field. We could talk about the why, but he is going to... He played there in the Arizona Fall League and did okay, but he can play. And the thing about the, him, too, was the, the concern about... Him playing shortstop, you guys. He looked fine to me. He looked. He he made some really nice plays. So this kid's an athlete. He can play. He can hit. He's going to stay. And there are places to play him besides shortstop. Well, I yeah. Ideally, Buxton's not sitting out a lot. I know that that happens (laughs) half the games basically. (laughs) But if Buxton's playing and Correa's playing, I would also consider third base. Now, sure, Urshel has been. Passable, and Miranda has shown some some flashes. Big home run over the weekend, but I don't think third base has like a locked in, mm. can't move a guy situation. So maybe you can kind of sprinkle him in. Maybe he's almost a super utility guy that's that's playing around different different spots. The the Twins have some really good problems here because at some point Luis Arise is going to be back from the injured list, and I, I think this Miguel Sano will be back in a month. But I I think. All of this bodes poorly for Sano because, like, give me a rise in the lineup. Give me Royce Lewis in the lineup, right? Give me, huh. give me these guys who are going to be better yes. defensive players who are going to get on base and make contact with the ball. 
I want to see those guys on the field for this team. I'm just saying, good old Byron, God bless him. I I love him, but relying on him to be out there is ridiculous. So I want to give myself as good of options in in, uh, center field as I possibly can. And I think if Royce can play out there, I'm fine with it. By the way, what is wrong? So he he has no structural damage to his knee, and yet he keeps missing time. He had to come out in the eighth or ninth inning, and it's yeah. it's a hip now. So he's got the, he's got he's dealing with the knee, I, but now it's a hip situation. Yes, said he did acupuncture for the first time too. I'm not, yeah. What happened? He landed it, so that did, did you see the the strikeout that got dropped Saturday? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he hauled ass. To first, which by the way, you know, good hustling, but he landed, um, he landed really hard, and and and, and he took a big stride. And I think when, and I just think run, that's the dude. same, just... and I think that's the same exact thing though that he did against Boston this time last year, which got him back on, on the aisle back then for an extended period with a hip. I think something happens there. I think there's a problem there. I really do. Mm. Because he, this continues to be like, but like he's. This worries me. A hit. Base, baseball has been played for 170 years. Yep. Guys sprint to first base and lunge to try and get to the base. I know. Multiple times every game. Yeah. And don't tear their hip or <laughs> tweak their knee. Well, why is he always getting hurt on these sort of benign plays? I'll throw out a word when it, it comes to hips because hips are ordinarily problems for old people. Chronic. Does he have a chronic condition? Like, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. Oh, man. It's weird that he continues. It's weird that two consecutive years now, it's a hip. Like, I don't think of ordinarily, unless you, you've got some type of weird chronic condition, I don't associate young athletes in their prime with hip problems. No. it's Do you? No, not. Like, knee, it's, yes, knee problems. I'm trying to think I'm, of examples. Usually, it's a it's a later in I your mean, career thing. Golfer, Bo Jackson had golfers. a hip, but that, that was from, I think, a football injury. I don't know. Oh, man. All right, Declan. All right, my next statement is uh, Max Kepler, comma, never doubted him. Never doubted Max Kepler here, okay? Last 20 games comma. for Max. The comma's yes. key there. Thank yeah, you. Okay. Thank you, Cloud State. Good job. Go Huskies. Uh, last 20 games for Max Kepler, slashing 281, 378, 500. That's an OPS of 878. And Phil, help me out here with you being the analytics nerd. So, so Kepler has always had bad Batting average on balls in play, right? His bat pip's always been terrible. Correct, um, yes. It's always he, been he really bad. Because he hits too many pop-ups. And you typically, and this is where I need your help here, you'd like your batting average and bat pip, do you want them as close as possible? Like, do, do, if you're hitting, no, it, it, you don't want the, them as close as possible. Well, you, I mean, wow, you've opened up an analytics can of worms here. So, your bat, and I, the broadcast team on Bally's, oh, they led were by Dick this. Bramer, was trying to explain and, and dissect BABIP and FIP and all those oh. things yesterday. And I appreciate that they're trying to mix these things into oh. the broadcast. I don't know that Dick Bramer is the is the conduit that we need for the mainstream audience. <laughs> but and Morno's trying to Morno actually was kind of yeah, defending he, FIP and yeah. well it's 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 He's not trying. perfect, but it's a way for you to quantify the things that a pitcher can control. So your batting average on balls in play, and this you can think of this as a hitter and as a pitcher. It's everything that doesn't go over the fence and is mm-hmm. in in play, essentially. So you're taking away strikeouts, you're taking away... So a strikeout can negatively impact your batting average, but a strikeout has no bearing on your batting average on balls in play. So yep. if you have a... You could, for instance, have... Like Mike Trout is a guy that has, at times in his career, has had a batting average on balls in play between 370 and 400 because he just hits missiles. When he puts a ball in play, because he hits the ball so hard and usually hits line drives or towering fly balls that go off the fence, he's going to have those balls convert to a hit more often than the guy that pops the ball up all the time, like Max Kepler. So a league average batting average on balls in play usually falls between 290 and 310. Mm -hmm. Max Kepler's career batting average on balls in play is 248. That's not bad luck. Over the course of one year, that might be bad luck. And and there's in, in small sample sizes, you can say, boy, that guy that guy's been a pretty good hitter. Why is his batting average so low? Oh, his career batting average on balls in play, based on his fly ball, line drive, ground ball profile, is 340. And this year it's 180 through two months. 
that's probably going to turn at some point if he just keeps hitting the ball, right? Mm-hmm. But Max Kepler has been one of the the lowest batting average on balls in play guys in all of baseball because he rolls over a lot of pitches for weak ground balls and he pops the ball up often, oftentimes more often than other players. Okay. Is that two in the weeds? No, I don't think so. Because okay. over these last 20 games, his batting average, so traditional batting average is 281. His batting average on balls in play over those 20 games is 298. So they're, they're very close together. On top of him having some nice power, right? Four home runs. He's drawn 10 walks. He's always actually had a pretty decent eye at the plate. I'll give him credit for that. Even when he hasn't been able to hit, he actually has a fairly decent eye. That's above league average. But I am curious if he can continue that. Because he is kind of this weird, streaky player where he can hit, he has some pop, he has a very good eye, he's a decent right fielder, but then he has stretches where he'll hit 200. Um, so I'm curious if this is this is it. But my statement is Max Kepler never doubted him regardless. Yeah, never doubted Max. Kepler. One of the great batting average on balls and play guys was Ichiro. So Ichiro had some seat now later in his career because his speed kind of wore off. But think about the ways that you could convert a batted ball into a hit. A line drive is going to be a hit. A towering fly ball that goes to the warning track off the wall is a hit. But ground balls that you beat out are going to be hit. So so Byron Buxton tends to have a higher batting average on balls in play. Max Kepler doesn't beat out a lot of ground balls for hits. He just doesn't. He's he's not super slow, but he's he's not a burner like Byron Buxton. But there are some seasons where Ichiro, because of line drives, speed, everything. 2004, he hit 400 on balls in play. 2007, 389 balls in play. Two, uh, 2009, 384 on on balls in play. So Kepler just when Kepler is striking out a lot, he's not making up for it by, you know, rolling a ground ball and beating it out. He just he doesn't have a lot of ways to get on base unless he's pounding the ball. So that's something to watch with old Max Kepler. All right, my next statement's more of a question. Why would you trade for a pitcher with known elbow issues? Mm. <laughs> so Chris Paddock is now, he exited early because of elbow inflammation. Here's an article from CBSSports.com on September 29th, 2021. So at the end of last season. Chris Paddock received an injection in his right elbow earlier this week and is expected to make a full recovery from a slight UCL sprain in six to eight weeks. He had his elbow checked out by Dr. Keith Meister, who previously oversaw the right-hander's Tommy John surgery in 2016. He was recommended to treat the elbow this time around through non-surgical means, setting him up for what should be a relatively normal offseason. So you, this guy had an elbow injection at the end of the season last year. Yeah, hanging by a thread, and now it might not be. How often do you hear torn UCL... Yeah. Non-surgery option, and it works and I, out well. In the you don't, run. and I hate that. Have the surgery, but yes, I, I yes, I thought the same exact thing. And it's like the twin. It, they they were so he he departed the game what after like two and a third or something on Sunday. Yeah, and and they're like you know this might not, this might not might not be good news. Yeah, you know what? It's not going to be. Like what's he gonna come back and hey, it tore, it's hey. good, it's it's all torn now. Now I can pitch again. No, it's not going to be good news. <laughs> Flopping around. I mean, no, I thought the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, here's the pitch. Just arms just like falls off. Yeah, yeah it's not good. It's not good. All right. That's my, that was my last thing. You guys have any other okay. twin statements? Yeah, I got one more. I got okay. one more because yours was negative on pitching, and I'm going to go positive because this is the new me. This is the new Judd. Naturally. Sports Dad Sunshine. Here's my statement Starting to make an impact. Starting to make an impact. It turns out that there is a chance that Derek Falvey might have just needed time to identify in the draft starting pitching. Because we we have been talking on this show for like the last year about he's really not finding pitching. Like he's trading for some of it, but he's not finding it. Bailey Ober, 12th round pick in 2017, currently hurt, but certainly a staple of the rotation now. Josh Winder. Guys. who has been like who has been as the kids like to say shoving he's been outstanding and Shoves. certainly will almost have to stay in the rotation in some way shape or form once guys come back or in Paddock's case they don't come back 7th round pick in 2018 so maybe it just took some time before Derek Falvey's pitching selections in the draft started to make an impact good all right about damn time wasn't How about that, that for some sunshine, to, huh? Can I hear the Great. crowd? Can I hear the crowd, please? Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Take that, <laughs> Twins Twitter. Judd asking for applause. I was, Ask, you know what, Twins Twitter? Applause I'm supporting cakes. the team. I'm supporting the team. Huh? God. Amazing. Phil didn't. Phil didn't support the team. No, he did not. And Chris Patterson. I got, geez, I got two games this week. I got back-to-back games. I'm going to be baking in the sunshine. Did you say it was going to be 90 on Thursday? 90 here? degrees That's, on can Thursday, Can we just get dude. 75 and call it no, a day? No, do not be this person. Can we just no, get 70? I've not always be this been person. this person. I, I swear always to God. Have. We have off had, my lawn. We have been freezing our asses want, off all of April, yeah, and now it's over 75, and now you're you're bitching already? I want to be 75. God. Jet, it sounds like you don't like living in Minnesota weather, is what it sounds like to me. You don't like the cold, but you don't like it to be too hot, so you like the six days a year where it's perfect. <laughs> I want 75. <laughs> 75 to 80. I don't want 90. I don't need okay. 90, and I certainly don't need humidity. I hate humidity. Right. Maybe you should I do. I to, hate humidity. Yeah. Maybe you should move to San Diego or something. It's just I don't like San Diego. I don't do really you like, like I, I don't like the West Coast. People are boring out there. I like <laughs> the East Coast. We they move quicker. They move quicker. They're passionate about their sports. Yeah, Plus the West they, Coast, nobody works. They just drink wine and chill yeah, out. Yeah. They show up late to Dodger games. <laughs> Padres <laughs> fans. Boring. Amazing. Like the West Coast. Those those statements, by the way, were presented by our friends. If you want to ride out to the West Coast. You know, pick a nice stretch mm-hmm. in the summertime. But Dennis Kirk is here to help you. You know, riding season is definitely upon us here. We're like a month and a half away from summer for crying out loud here. Dennis Kirk has been a big time partner of ours here at Score North from the very start a few years ago. And whatever you ride, Harley, Indian, Metric Cruiser, Sport Bike, you'll find what you need at DennisKirk.com. Free shipping on orders over $89. Also, over 160,000 parts and accessories in stock and same day shipping on orders placed before 8 p.m. Ride more, wait less at DennisKirk.com. Also, before we get to Buffoon of the Week, a shout out to our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. They've been around for over 100 years helping business owners maximize their success through risk management tools and resources. They specialize in certain industries. You can find a full list of those industries at FederatedInsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. All right, it is time for the Buffoon of the Week. I'm Mackie and Judd. Who is it this week? Judd Zolgad, you do the honors. This one was a slam dunk in every way possible. The buffoon, the buffoons, it's plural. I'm picking on more than one. But the buffoons of the week are NBA fans who think they have license to verbally, and in the case of that punk in Dallas, physically abuse Chris Paul's mother, wife. But beyond that, it's these fans that sit courtside And, like, basically feel that they are protected enough to have license to verbally attack players. Like, viciously, There's it goes well beyond the scope of good taste. So what happened exactly? I saw the kid getting ejected, and he he looked like a deer in the headlights, and Chris Paul was berating him. Yes, and it sounds like like, um, Chris Paul's wife and mom, well, first of all, his mom was somehow, according to the story I read, shoved at some point. Now, I don't know hard or not, but who cares? Um, And then his wife was, I think, verbally accosted. And I don't know if it was just that kid or what, because, yeah, that that kid looked young and and clueless. Yeah. Uh, But it's the bigger problem is this. We see these type of stories way too much. Like, just because you're sitting near the court doesn't give you the right to basically think that you are protected enough that you can ver- verbally confront and say whatever you please to a player. It's ridiculous. Okay, what if, you know, hear me out on this, okay? What if you had a certain limited amount of tickets, maybe like 100 tickets, where you you, you paid extra for the right to be able to verbally accost people? You know, it's, um, it's like an extra $500, but you can say and do pretty much whatever you want. I, don't think that's a good idea. I don't think the players deserve that. Like it's fine if you want to if you want to give them some good old, you know, fashion grief, that's fine. But like you literally have guys now and it's these dude bros who drive me crazy. The worst. Who think that 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 they have dude bought bro. a ticket and think they'll be protected by like security and stuff. So they can get away with saying inflammatory things about players' families, um probably worse than that at times. I don't know. But I just, basketball is a great, really cool spectator sport because it's the one sport where you can be super close, right? Like you could be on the court, basically, which is 
Awesome. But to then, you know, very 2022 to abuse that and to think, well, I'm paying a lot, so I can say whatever I want to Chris Paul, and it can cross the line, and Chris Paul can't touch me. You know, these dude bros, I'd like to see him get beat up. Basketball is weird because in football, every, everyone is very much up eight feet in the air, oh, yeah. and it's and it's very much separated. Baseball, that, that there's a net now around the entire infield base. And you're baseball. not on top of home plate, you know? There are literally fans sitting on the court next yes. to the bench in basketball. And then fans sitting a row yes. behind you when you're, you're on the bench. You could be sitting on the bench. You might be sitting next to a fan and then a fan breathing down your neck behind you. Correct. You know? It's it's very bizarre. And, like, you, you will see cross court – the point guard bringing the ball up the floor and and a fan will be walking like with their beer back to their seat. Yeah. <laughs> and like they're separated true. by this much. Yeah, Oops, sorry, sorry. Just, just squeeze which by is, here real quick. Which is awesome. That's really, really cool. But then these idiots that abuse it and think that they have license to say whatever they so you know want because they paid a lot. I mean, screw that. Like it's when, not right. It's like when Larry David trips Shaq. Oh, that God, that's a did. great one. That's such a good <laughs> no, one. like an all-timer. <laughs> that's such a good one. But Bar- Barkley said, fix the problem by allowing that fan and the player being accosted to go to center court and let the player beat the crap out of the fan, and that will fix the problem instantly because no one else will want to get Beat well, up would it be would Barkley it, fashion? He's not wrong. So I heard that take, but would it would it be a fi- it'd be a five minute fight though, right? It wouldn't be just a five minute. You wouldn't be tying the guy up. It would be yeah, so it'd if, be a if, fight. But, and like, if the like, guy like, can like, defend like, himself. Well, but if that guy beats your star player, I don't. Now like you're the now it's kind of a chance. It's, <laughs> I don't like the fans. I don't, know, you don't think that kid that could have taken Chris Paul's thirty seven. He just played a bunch of minutes. He he looks tired to me. You know, there's nothing worse too than some young punk who thinks he's cool, right? Oh yeah. Like that that kid, I would have loved to see that that okay, kid. Get now whacked you're just yelling at clouds right yeah. across the face. No, I'm not. No, like if the fan looked a young like he could punk defend who himself, he's cool. Did Did you see that kid? He was the he yeah, was but that, but, a young punk what, who thought he was cool. <laughs> Most he was a young punk. He's the cool. de- he's the definition of a kid who deserved his comeuppance. Okay, I agree sure. that that kid definitely deserved his comeuppance, but I don't agree that all young kids who think they're cool are the devil. No, not if they're smart enough. Society. No, no, heck no, no, no. That's not what I said. I said if you're that kid, you should be. Yeah, if you're if you're a good kid, you're smart. God Declan's bless a you. young kid who thinks he's cool. Yeah. Yeah, but he's not going to verbally accost a player. Oh, oh. I verbally I have verbally accosted players at baseball. Uh, not, games. Okay, not with not with uh, terms. Like you're not going to talk about the player's family, I hope. No, or, or, but on my second date with now my beloved girlfriend, I I screamed trash can banger at George Springer when he popped <laughs> out, you know, like that. Dude, that's I fine. literally I stood up and yelled, and she still liked but, me. So yeah, but you they deserve that. That's fine. What I'm saying is you didn't yell about Springer's family. How comfortable no. did you feel on that first date? That was a pretty first comfortable. Date, second date. Second. You second were trying date. to impress How? her with your not knowledge of things. No, I mean, has, you have to no. feel that's a risky thing to do on a second date is to jump Very up risky. and yell trash can banger at a baseball player. Yeah, it feels right about yeah, that. I, I think and then you have to go- sit down and explain yeah. it potentially. Yeah. Maybe she knew what, what you were doing. She kind of knew. Yeah, yeah, she knew. She mul- She's actually pretty good with baseball. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I think I stood up and I yelled, go bang another trash can, you bum, I think is what I, what I <laughs> that's yelled. That's fine. Why don't that's you yell fine. the same thing at Carlos Correa when he comes up to the plate? No, he, the he plays for my team now. He plays for my team now. Okay, yeah, hypocrit- And me and Carlos go what way back from, from 25th. It's a whole thing. What a hypocrite. Oh, no, yeah. He, we're cool. We're, we're Speaking of being cool, me and Carlos Correa. That's right. My, my okay. favorite, I was, a, I was a kid in the mid to late 90s, and Manny Ramirez was with the Cleveland Indians, pretty new at the time. Actually, you know, you know, this was actually not Manny Ramirez. It was Juan Gonzalez. I think they both played Juan for Gun. Cleveland at the time. Oh, Juan, or maybe yeah, this Juan. is when Juan Gon played for Texas. I'm. It was like late 90s. And Juan Gon was in the outfield. And there was a bunch of fans just yelling, just chanting at him and just ripping him and stuff. Like yelling steroids. I don't know. what. And all he did was turn around, acted like he was pulling his wallet out of his back pocket, and started fanning fake cash Good for him. at the fans. Just to Dude, say, that's awesome. I that's don't great. care what that's you think. I make a ton of money. Screw you. Yeah. That's actually a great <laughs> joke. That's awesome. So, I can't use that. All right. That's your buffoon of the week. I agree. Yeah. By the way. That kid was a punk. Yeah. Well, and just be smart. Fans, just be smart. Especially rich fans. 
There's a lot of rich fans now. You're sitting in the lower a lot bowl. Of rich. At those Warriors fans. games, you're probably probably a rich. Well, those people, guy. yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. All right. Any anyhow, all right. That's oh, yeah. a wrap. Mackie and Judd here. Daily Minnesota sports entertainment lessons, therapy, speculation. We'll see you guys over on Purple Daily.